Today's rebuild is going to be a little different as we're rebuilding a career instead of a franchise as we give recently benched and perceived bust Bryce Young a second chance at living up to his elite potential that he showed in college at Alabama. We're going to play his entire career until he retires and it's going to be a revenge tour. We're setting three goals that we must achieve before he calls it quits. One is to break the Panthers' all-time passing yards record, which is currently held by Cam Newton, 29,725 yards. Two is to break the Panthers' all-time passing touchdown record, which is also held by Cam Newton with 186. And three, do what no Panthers quarterback has been ever able to do, and that is win a Super Bowl. Bryce Young was drafted to be the answer for the Carolina Panthers at quarterback. They gave up a lot of assets, a lot of players to acquire his services, and it made a whole lot of sense. Bryce Young at Alabama was prolific. An 8-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio. The 2021 Heisman Trophy winner. Won more games than I could imagine as a Florida Gator fan in only two seasons. It made a lot of sense. However, after two years as a starter, two games into the 2024 NFL regular season, Bryce Young has been benched for Andy Dalton. When a head coach decides, yeah, I think we're better off with Andy Dalton, you know you got some pretty gigantic problems. So we're going to bring back an older series from the channel called Career Revivals, very similar to a franchise rebuild. A Career Revival is where we take over the career of a player deemed a bust and try to turn it around, try to make them in the player that they were supposed to be when they were drafted. I got a list of a bunch of names I think would be pretty fun for this series. If there's anyone you want to see in particular done, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. But there's no better starting point than with Bryce Young. There's no other way to put it. Bryce Young has been terrible in a Carolina Panthers uniform. Now, I think there's an argument to be made because he'll always be linked to C.J. Stroud, who's killing it for the Houston Texans. If C.J. Stroud ended up in Carolina, is it much different? You know, the Panthers team is so bad, I... I think there's an argument to be had there, but the fact of the matter is Bryce Young was drafted to be a game changer, a franchise-altering player that is going to bring a bunch of wins, a bunch of production, elevate players around him, and he has failed to do that time and time again. For all the good that Bryce Young had leaving Alabama, there were concerns, size concerns, 5'10", 204, he's undersized quarterback. And much like, hey, who's he, Collier Murray, Drew Brees, doesn't have the arm talent that those guys had, doesn't have the elite athleticism that a Kyler Murray has. And, and you look at the positives of Bryce Young. The undeniable positives was that he was a winner, mentally tough, great between the years, and an accurate passer. We have not seen any of those things on display with the Carolina Panthers, but I still think there's a chance. I think that there is still a player in there that needs to get developed. There's a player in there that a fresh change of scenery could be exactly what the doctor ordered for him to reach his potential. So that is what we're going to do here today. Bryce Young's time here in 2024 for the Carolina Panthers has come to an end, but it's time to open and begin a new chapter. I think the perfect landing spot for Bryce Young is the New York Giants. I think the New York Giants have a head coach in Brian Dayball who knows that this is likely his final year if he can't find a way to put it all together. His wagon has been hitched to the $150 million quarterback in Daniel Jones, who, much like Bryce Young, through two games of the 2024 season, looks bad. So you get someone like Brian Dayball, needs to throw a Hail Mary to try to save his job. Brian Dayball, a lot of connections to Alabama. I think he would see this as, I could fix Bryce Young. We got playmakers that they don't have in Carolina. We got Malik Neighbors. We got a shiny weapon that is going to be a guy, an elevator for Bryce Young to turn it all around. So Bryce Young is now the starting quarterback for the New York Giants. As the rightful, most talented quarterback in a room where they've also made a move for Desmond Ritter. You got Drew Locke. All of these pretty much Hail Marys from Brian Dayball at the quarterback position. It is now Bryce Young's turn to see if he can be the man to turn around the New York Giants. Look at the offense that Bryce Young is getting himself thrown into. There's a balance. You got some veterans in Singletary, Slayton. Got Tim Patrick, offensive line. It's not brutal, probably similar to the Carolina Panthers, even though the blindside protector, the most important position on the offensive line, is a gigantic upgrade going from Iki Aquano, who is a first-round bust, or at least entering that territory on his own, to the great Andrew Thomas, who is a top-10 left tackle in the league. You get the rookie Canadian Theo Johnson at tight end, who could develop into a great safety net for Bryce Young. But the big get, the most talented wide receiver by a mile, that Bryce Young has gotten to play with in his NFL career. Malik Neighbors, the rookie out of LSU, who 
is incredible. Very good player. Absolutely a bona fide wide receiver number one. I'm excited to see what them two can do together. First career start for Bryce Young comes on the road. Week three in the rain against a very good Cleveland Browns defense. But we get a great opportunity here to start fresh. Really want to try to get that touchdown to Malik Neighbors. Want that connection to get, get off on the get-go. That'll do. Come on, Bryce. Not all good. Come on! You just really want to see smart decision-making from Bryce Young. I'm not expecting him to just magically develop a cannon, but I want to see a guy that can process the game, that can throw with anticipation, that can use his accuracy, use his strengths. And we get Bellinger. Whether it be right in the middle. Second touchdown of the game for Bryce Young. Hot start for the young quarterback. In fact, don't do too much. This is where Bryce Young would be on the verge of turning the ball over. Boom. We're late, but we're going really to get that to the veteran Slayton. Ooh. One yard line, huh? I think he does even say, I think the funniest quarterback to run. The tush push would be with with Bryce Young. I'm gonna be honest. I think the funniest quarterback in the NFL, if the, another team was gonna run the tush push, would be Bryce Young. Just pushing the smallest possible quarterback, a foot. I'm here for that. That'd be so. His first game, and that is a very happy Brian Dable, who is one and zero with his first game after acquiring his new quarterback in Bryce Young, and he was. Everything he needed him to be. Didn't make ridiculous throws. Didn't necessarily set a, a couple sports center top 10 plays. But he was efficient with the football. He was smart with the football. We had a balanced offense. And those are three recipes to get absolute success in the NFL. 66% completion. 161 yards. Two touchdowns through the air. Had three total with the QB sneak. It's a hell of a debut. All the points that the Giants scored, Bryce Young was responsible for. Year one comes to an end, and I think better than expected. We go 9-8, and eight, so above 500. Offensively, we are top 20 in points per game, top 15 in passing yards per game, all of which, you know, marks that the Giants weren't hitting with Daniel Jones at quarterback. Finishes the eight seats. We were really one win away from being the surprise shock team making the playoffs. Statistically, Bryce Young, I mean, not too bad. 3,800 yards, 33 touchdowns. His touchdowns places him just outside the top 10 in the NFL. 15 interceptions is a little high. You definitely want to hone that in a little bit. And I think we will as he gets more comfortable here in this New York Giants system. Able to also chip in with a 330 yards on the ground and six rushing touchdowns. So that gives him 39 total. On the season, and just out of curiosity, Malik Neighbors, our big new shiny wide receiver one for Bryce Young, finishes his rookie campaign, 79 catches, 1,100 yards, and 11 touchdowns. So hopefully their connection continues to grow. This is the bottom of their stat lines, and it's only going to get better from here on out. We close out year one of Bryce Young in New York. He is a 74 overall. We got four additional skill points. Looking at here in week 17, we hit the milestone goal of 3,500 yards passing, which gives us almost 14,000 XP, and the milestone going of 30 passing touchdowns on the season for another 14,000 XP, giving us a gigantic four skill point upgrade for Bryce Young. You know what? I think we'll take this opportunity to have Brian Dable take him under his wing and get him to be the perfect quarterback for his scheme. So we're going to pump all the points into trying to make him. The best quarterback that Brian Dayball can have in his scheme, in his system, which is a field general. And we're going to finish year one in New York. Bryce Young as a 77 overall. You know what? Through that adversity for how well he played, put the patch on his chest. So in career revivals, we do not control the free agency moves of our team. We do not control the draft picks of our team. We kind of let the sim take the wheel there. And uh, first free agency class for the Giants, they go James Houston, Isaiah Rogers as the big gets on the defensive side of the ball. As far as helping Bryce Young, we get J.D. McKissick receiving back the veteran. And D.J. Chark comes in to replace Darius Slayton, which is, you know, it's kind of breaking even there, I think. And someone that usually does franchise rebuilds, this feels 
Pretty gross to do, but best of luck with the draft. All right, looking at the work that we did, um, you know, we went offense. First round, we got Malik Ross, the deep threat at a USC. 75 normal dev, but we got 95 speed, 97 acceleration, 81 catching, 87 spec, 96 agility, 90 change of direction. That's a nice weapon. Then we followed up with a running back addition to add some competition with Devin Singletary. Damon Fenderson, 73 normal. Another guy that brings a lot of speed, a lot of juice to the offense. Chill is in the air. Leaves falling on the ground in football every weekend. That is what fall is all about. I'm partnering with DraftKings to make each weekend even more exciting by getting into the action with DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns. And right now, all new customers who bet $5 will instantly get $200 in bonus bets. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. If sports betting is not yet available in your state or province, don't worry. DraftKings is one-stop shop for all things Daily Fantasy, where you can join in on all the fun and have a shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, use my promo code C4. Bet just $5 on any wager. Get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code C4, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. So this has been our first full year with the New York Giants. Here's how the team lines up. Offensive line is still solid, if not slightly above average. We got Theo Johnson entering a big year two. The wide receiver room, Malik Neighbors, clearly firing away our wide receiver one. We got Wandale Robinson and the first round pick Ross out of USC looking to make an impact as a rookie. Singletary still our lead back. And Bryce Young here at a 79 overall. It's our goal this season. Cut down on the interceptions. If we can keep the yards and touchdowns the same, we likely will be chasing a dev trade increase at the end of the year, if not get one in season. Year two for Bryce Young. We go 8-9, and nine, so not the best record, but we're able to scratch and claw our way into the wild card round as the seventh seed in the NFC. Statistically speaking, a fringe top 10 quarterback for Bryce Young, over 4,000 yards passing, 34 touchdowns, 15 picks. So the picks are still a little higher than what we'd like to see. Almost 400 yards on the ground, another three touchdowns. Blake Davers continues to be a bona fide wide receiver. One, Wandale was solid. Johnson was solid. DJ Chark, the free agency signing with 11 touchdowns. But got to be pretty happy with where Bryce Young is playing right now, leading the Giants in his first full season to the playoffs, regardless of how ugly the record is. But we're ahead of schedule as we follow the Philadelphia Eagles. Wasn't expecting to go on a deep playoff run. And that is not the kind of game you want to see out of Bryce Young. 271 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. Didn't offer much as a runner as well. Hate to say that he cost us the game, but your quarterback plays that bad. You're not going to win many games in the NFL, let alone in the playoffs. But the New York Giants' salary cap situation, not in a great spot. It is very beneficial for them to pick up the fifth-year option on Bryce Young's contract so you defer the gigantic payment. And while he's played well, while he's got them to the playoffs, you're still question marks whether or not he is going to be the franchise guy for Brian Dayball. So we're going to pick up the fifth-year option, but it's on him to earn a contract extension. Unfortunately, we did not sign a single player in free agency. My gut says because of Daniel Jones' contract still be on the books, we had less than, what, $15 million of total salary cap. Makes it tough to make a move, but still nobody? It's a little suspect. Let's hope for a better draft than what we got last year with zero dev trade players. Okay, I appreciate that. We went heavy. We got two running backs. We got a new starting center potentially in Cameron Bryant. The hidden dev out of NC State. That's a nice pick. If Armand Gray, the second round pick out of Cal, 73 with a hidden dev. Nice get for the guy. I think the interior of the O-line definitely needed some TLC. But the bell of the ball, maybe. The number one. There's probably not usually a whole lot more players that are better than this. 79 hidden dev for Rashad Wynn out of Tennessee. And that is good. Oh, yeah. 94 speed, 95 acceleration. Good carrying, great base. He's going to take the pressure off Bryce Young so he doesn't have to throw the ball 35-plus times a game. And hopefully this will help us cut down on the interception. Because I think, honestly, back-to-back -back years, the positive production was probably good enough for him to get up to a star def, get off normal. The interceptions have been hurting us. Maybe having a legitimate, bona fide star in the backfield again, a true Saquon Barkley replacement, uh, will help cut down some of those interceptions.
For what it's worth, Rashad Wynn is the second best player in this entire draft class. So outstanding value getting that at pick 19. So at the end of the 2026 season, this is the year Bryce Young playing on his fifth year option. The Giants go 9-8, and eight, which kind of feels like our ceiling at the moment. But this is our final year with Daniel Jones' ugly contract on the books. So I do think we're going to have an opportunity to maybe sign some free agents and make a jump in terms of talent on the team and increase that 83 overall, but still made the playoffs. Bryce Young was solid, not spectacular. I mean, for a guy that's playing on a fifth-year option, trying to play for a mega contract extension, he's still very much an unknown, even though he's trending towards solid and not bust. He's starting to wear the stench of bust, of which he was with Carolina, off a little bit. With a couple of nice seasons, 4,000 yards passing, 30 touchdowns, 12 picks. So the picks are down a little bit. Oof. We got 400 yards rushing and eight rushing touchdowns. So we go well over 4,000 yards from scrimmage and 38 total touchdowns. Let me be honest, this might be a chance at a dev trade increase this offseason. The, uh, the rookie running back win was okay. Definitely not Saquon Barkley numbers. Jalen Hyatt kind of emerged as our wide receiver one, even though Neighbors still really solid with 951 yards. You'd love to see that go over 1,000, but he'd have double-digit touchdowns. In the first round of the playoffs, we get a win. A staple, signature victory, the first of his career for Bryce Young. As they dumped the Lions in an upset, and he played a good game. He played Jared Goff, 216 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Also, another two touchdowns on the ground, giving him four on the day. With that win, we're into the division round against the one seed and bitter divisional rival, the Philadelphia Eagles. But the Eagles are in a different area code talent-wise than where we are at right now. And uh, while we put our best foot forward and kind of finished the game strong, and Bryce Young had a fairly stellar performance, three touchdowns total. We're just, again, we're just missing a couple pieces. That is a big difference maker for the Eagles. Eagles offensive line is a lot better. They got better skill position players. But we're working progress. And again, the key thing is we're for sure coming back for at least one more year on the fifth-year option with Bryce Young, and we're going to go in this offseason with the Daniel Jones contract off the books. So hopefully maybe we can get a wide receiver. Maybe we can add to the offensive line. Maybe get a game-changer on defense. The opportunities, if they present themselves on the open market, I'd love to see the CPU be aggressive. For whatever it's worth, and it's not worth much right now, especially because that is our competition, but we did lose to the eventual Super Bowl champion. But I do think in harsh news, we did not get a dev trade increase. For Bryce Young, 38 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. I thought that was going to be a lock. All right, so in free agency, uh, we brought back Jalen Hyatt. We bring in James Daniels at guard, which I guess. But they spend and invest mostly on the defense, bringing in Tyreek Stevenson, who's going to be a starting corner, and Will McDonald, who's going to be a starting pass rusher. And I do think for the draft, we've been very lucky that a lot of our premier picks have been invested on the offensive side of the ball to help Bryce Young out. Yeah, but not the case this year. We do get a 70-wide receiver late. Brian Winslow with a dev trait out of Texas. I like to see that. Look at that. 99 spectacular catch with 96 jumping. So a little bit of a niche player. High, human highlight reel, if you will. But we go big on the defensive side of the ball. We get Lawson, 73 linebacker, 71 D-tackle stump in the first round pick. Sean Slate, 75, but only a normal dev trait out of Louisville. We are now here in year four with Bryce Young in New York. Year five overall of his NFL career. We're playing on the fifth-year option. It's a contract year. And I think last year's playoff success, moving on in the playoffs, generally has been playing a lot better than Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones and this Giants organization is like the barometer of getting paid a new contract as a quarterback, I think we've definitely got to those expectations, if not exceeded those expectations. So I think as long as we don't regress here in year number four, we should Probably expect a contract extension. A really nice one at that. So after two straight seasons of making the playoffs, 7-10. So we haven't really had a brutal season. You look at the passing offense. I was a top 10 passing offense. So I hardly think our success and or lack of it is due to Bryce Young. And no one has a contract here. Bryce Young, statistically, one of his best seasons. 4,400 yards, 31 touchdowns through the air, 13 interceptions, 70% completion percentage, 370 on the ground with another four touchdowns. So we're getting... You know, 35-plus total touchdowns from Bryce Young. He's keeping this Giants team that, for most of this and most of his time, they've had to be handicapped with the Daniel Jones contract. He's had them in playoff contention. Two straight years in the playoffs, one playoff win this year. A little bit short, but, I mean, we didn't get any help 
in free agency. And our draft went defense heavy. So the offense didn't really have an opportunity to, you know, kind of exp- I mean, Neighbors had a great year. His most productive season. Hyatt was outstanding. Ray almost had 3,000-yard receivers. So I'm thinking, man, like, if I'm from a neutral standpoint, I think the Giants would at least offer him a contract. Probably wouldn't overpay, but they would at least try and bring him back. And I mean, chasing after those all-time records for our challenge here today, just in case things don't go well, this is the end of our chapter with the Giants, we are chasing just under 30,000 passing yards all-time. And we are on pace to do that. We are chasing 186 total touchdowns from Cam Newton through the air. And we are at 139. So we are well on pace to achieve and prove the Carolina Panthers wrong but it's whether or not we're going to be able to continue our career with the Giants or it's going to be elsewhere that I think we break those records. There's still an elephant in the room as far as development for Bryce Young. The rating, I mean, I can't expect a whole lot better than that, up to an 85 overall. But the fact that we've had some pretty good seasons and we've yet to get a dev trade increase off of his performance. I mean, we've been closer to 40 touchdowns and then not. And the interceptions are staying down. It's almost feeling like maybe it's not meant to be for him to get off that normal dev. That doesn't mean it's a deal breaker. It just limits the ceiling, limits the potential of Bryce Young to go on and become, you know, a 96, 97, 98, one of the top quarterbacks in the game. It's very unlikely he's going to get that with a normal dev trait. But, you know, it's this is our first of maybe many career revivals on the channel. And I think there's going to be situations where we do have quarterbacks that just pop off dev trait. And then it's like the Rocky got strapped to them and boom, they go off. A little bit more of a humbling approach here with Bryce Young, not getting the dev trait roles, but he's grinding his way through his career and trying to figure it out. And I think right now, as we potentially enter free agency, we're in a great spot. As we look at the contracts, not a lot of interest for Bryce Young to remain in New York, even though they gave him a second chance and he's played his best football of his career. I think from a giant perspective, to take myself out of it, I think Bryce Young has played well enough, has had some playoff success, that a neutral offer is a little bit disrespectful. However... We don't have a dev trade increase. We have only have one playoff win. We just missed the playoffs. So I don't think it'd be realistic for them to overpay for Bryce Young. I feel like an offer here, player friendly in the middle, five years, $155 million. If he takes it, I think very reasonable contract. If he decides to hit the open market, also wouldn't blame it because it's a quarterback and you want to get as much money as humanly possible. Bryce Young, will he remain a member of the New York Giants or hit the open market? And he has signed on. And he's not going anywhere. After paying Bryce Young and Deontay Banks getting a contract, nothing. We just lost star dev tight end Theo Johnson and decided, nah, we're good at tight end, I guess. Even though we had, I think it was around $40 million of cap. Okay, hopefully we get a little love in the draft on the offense. So I'd love to see a tight end. I'd love to see a linebacker, potentially. Our rush defense kind of sucks. And a good defense will definitely go a ways in helping Bryce Young achieve what he wants. And we do go heavy offense. I'm a little disrespected that we drafted a terrible quarterback in the fourth round to be our backup. We got a 71 corner in the fifth, 70 corner in the third, 74 right tackle in the second round. Usually tackles aren't that high that are still available. And he is a hidden death, Will Williams. You know, if we need a tackle, Evan Neal re-signed, but... Very well, maybe a BPA. I'm not going to complain about that one bit. Maybe you can move him along and play him at a guard or, or find the best mismatch. But we do go tight end in the first round. We get Jay Reichert, 75 normal. So we have gone outside of that running back. Anytime we've gone after a skill position player offensively in the first round, they have not had the dev traits, which has been kind of fitting because that's the biggest thing we've been struggling with with Bryce Young. But at least we got a tight end. At the end of the 2028 season, the first year, the big contract is set for Bryce Young. They go 9-8, and eight, which again has kind of been our record. But take a look at the passing yards per game. We were closer to top 10 than not. That's kind of switched on its head. We had one of the worst passing offense in the league. And we were brutally first team out of the playoffs in the NFC as the 9 seed. Bryce Young, uh, yeah, that's not great. 3,800 yards, 29, 20 picks. I did not think at any point in this rebuild we would have to re-enter bus talks. But after getting a $150 million contract, that is a terrible stat line. He did, yeah, sure, I guess he went over 30 total touchdowns and 4,000 yards. 
20 picks? It's really one of those situations now. He is 28 years old. Are we at his ceiling? All right, so for the offseason, Malik Neighbors, Brian Burns got paid. We pick up the fifth-year option on the running back. We bring two signings in, Jatavius Martin, and we bring Chiga Conquo in at tight end to give us two deep at that spot. And for the draft, we get a mixed bag. We get three players above a 70. Marco Tucker, who's going to come in as an RB2, 94 speed. But again, man, just the severe lack of upside. We've got Malik Neighbors. The O-line's been fine. But we haven't really got those bona fide studs. And the fact that we are consistently getting normal dev traits in the first round on the offensive side of the ball is starting to get a little frustrating. So it's better year six. Akonko is a decent upgrade. Veteran option over Riker, our first round pick. I don't think I would have invested there. But I mean, you look at it, the offensive line is very good. We have a running back. We have a bona fide wide receiver one. Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver two, is solid. Maybe we don't have the slot option to say that we have a complete offense, but honestly, this is an offense that's good enough to not only be top 10 in the NFL, but at minimum, you know, can we get 10 wins finally? Can we for sure make the playoffs and not underperform here in year number six with New York? At the end of the 2029 season, our sixth year with the Giants, we go 12 and five, our best record to date, and we win the NFC East, our first divisional title. Just beating Dallas by one. We get to play right away and see who the best team is. Dallas has the number one defense in the league. But we have a borderline top 10 offense, top five passing offense, and a top five defense. This might be our best shot at a deep playoff run. And I love the fact that we improved by like 15 spots, 20 spots passing wise. And the yards are up to touchdowns. Not so much. Feel like we might be kind of at our ceiling there. Uh, for the tutties, but the interceptions aren't too shabby. Only nine picks, 31 touchdowns, 4,300 yards. We also got 350 on the ground and another three rushing touchdowns. So these have kind of been the norm. Obviously, passing yards are up. And with, are we top five in passing yards? Sometimes, you know, that could be a parameter for getting that star dev trait. It's better late than never, I suppose, with Bryce Young. Malik Neighbors went off. 115 catches, 1,500 yards, and nine tuts. We're able to beat the Dallas Cowboys in the opening round of the playoffs to establish that we are truly the top dogs in the NFC East this year. Bryce Young, I mean, double Dak Prescott's passing yards. Complimentary football. We ran the ball, we threw the ball, and we got the dub. We roll the 14-3 one seed. The New Orleans Saints, the second round, the number one offense in the NFL. The second passing offense, but we have a better defense. That could be the decider in this matchup where the winner goes to the NFC Championship game. And I... I... Damn it. 28-20, we fall. We get a playoff win. Bryce Young did everything he could in this matchup. 262 yards passing, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Had a rushing touchdown. It's just, at the end of the day, a little bit better performance from the defense is what was needed. Or more than six points in the second half. But in the losing effort, Bryce Young does get NFC Offensive Player of the Week. So at least we end the season feeling good about the quarterback spot, which wasn't the case last year. thought there was a chance we'd get a dev trade increase on Bryce Young. And again, I mean, we're at that age now too where if he does get one, he might just lose it due to normal regression. But it still evades us. We end the season as an 87 overall. So I think something cool and new that we have done here in this career rebuild series is the team that has deemed whatever player we feature as a bust. I always want to go and prove them wrong. And I think in this case, and probably in a lot of cases in future videos, let's just, let's become the all-time great for that franchise. The Panthers deemed Bryce Young a bust. So we said, you know what? We're going to, first of all, go and win a Super Bowl. Panthers have never done that. That's a work in progress. But I wanted to also break the all-time passing yard record and the all-time passing touchdown record just to prove that we would have been the greatest quarterback, the most productive quarterback in franchise history with the Panthers. And he's not a bust. And here, in year six with the Giants, 2029, we have now passed the all-time passing touchdown mark for the Carolina Panthers. Currently held at 186 by Cam Newton. We got 199 with Bryce Young. And probably by the end of next season, we will also have the passing yard record. I don't think we're going to get him in the sim. Dexter Lawrence looks to be hitting the open market. That's a gigantic loss for the defensive side of the ball. Same with Stevenson and Jalen Hyatt out of contract. So we re-signed our offensive line and decided, nah, we're good defensively. We don't need anything. Cool. This will probably be the first draft all rebuild 
that I would be perfectly fine if they go heavy on the defensive side of the ball. We lost Dexter Lawrence starting to tackle. We lost Stevenson starting corner. And they go quarterback in the first round. We get a 72 corner in the third, but they go Byron Ship. 72, probably normal. What a, what is this? We still got three years left on our contract. God damn it. So I don't think we take that as an outright massive slap in the face. It's very, I don't want to say similar because Aaron Rodgers was older, but it's like a late first round pick quarterback. It's like Jordan Love. However, just kind of doing my due diligence. If things don't, if, you know, if this continues to be a poorly run franchise, we might need to hand in our old pink slip here and uh, and get out of town. Especially if that's, you know, when we, it's it's pretty much Aaron Rodgers. We need wide receiver help. We need skill, we need defensive help. And you guys use a first round pick on a quarterback after spending no money in free agency. Very frustrating. So I did look at some trades, some teams we could potentially go to. Uh, I would say the most interesting teams that need quarterback help, the Raiders, the Seahawks, and the Titans. They are all very much teams. I think Seattle's probably the best landing spot, but we'll revisit that maybe in the offseason depending on how things go this year. And I think it's worth mentioning that out of all those teams, even finding a better landing spot with a better ran organization, a better general manager that will assist and put talent around Bryce Young, this is still the best chance at us going to win a Super Bowl. We have a star running back, a star wide receiver. Really wish we invested in getting a wide receiver two, wide receiver three. But we got two really nice tight ends that should be heavily involved. We have an outstanding offensive line, one of the best in the league. So it's it's definitely an interesting spot for us to be where we don't feel like we're necessarily valued, but also we have goals that we want to achieve, and it's probably the easiest to achieve said goals with the Giants right now. At the end of 2030, our seventh season here with the New York Giants, we go 10 and 7. It's another playoff berth, second in the NFC East. But we finish with a top five offense overall, the number one rushing offense. Passing offense, not brutal, all things considered. I, I think it's healthy and it kind of gets us back to the Saquon Barkley days. Looking at the stats for Bryce Young, you know, kind of playing like, again, fringe top 10 quarterback, which he should be at minimum given the contract that he got. Just under 4,000 total yards, 33 touchdowns. To 11 interceptions, 400 yards on the ground, 5 rushing touchdowns. Win was outstanding. 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns. Neighbors goes over 1,000 yards. Chica Conqua goes over 1,000 yards. So this is a very potent offense. And it was kind of always a foregone conclusion that we were going to get our second of three challenge. But we now have passed the all-time passing yards record by the Carolina Panthers, which was 29,725 by Cam Newton. Bryce Young with well over 31,000. Oh my God. So while we are, you know, getting one over on the Panthers, that is, you know, maybe there's a reason why the New York Giants drafted that quarterback in the first round. Not a good game by Bryce Young at all. That is a disgusting playoff loss. So I think after the selection of the first round, we have to act in what is the best interest of Bryce Young. And on the trade market, there are three teams that are interested in securing your services. We have the Cleveland Browns, the New England Patriots, and the Vegas Raiders. And I think the best landing spot, I'm not going to lie, kind of self scout the rosters a little bit. None of them are great. All of them are a considerable step down on what I think we have here in New York. But I do feel like our time has kind of ran its course here. We have peaked with the Giants. We've kind of reached our ceiling. And it might be more beneficial for Bryce Young to go try out a new offense. So we are going to Vegas. So here's our first look at Bryce Young in the silver and black. Obviously, is going to be a team captain. And hopefully, he's going to be the veteran presence that can take this roster further and break through the ceiling that we just couldn't do in New York. Look at the offense that we have around it. The offensive line is all dev traded up. Mix of veterans and younger players. We have Brock Bowers, top skill position player, 95 X-Factor, still in the prime of his career at 28 years old. Our wide receiver room, kind of similar to what we had in New York, so a little top-heavy, but it is led by Bradley Cheeks, 26 years old, at a Cal. 88, superstar dev, deep threat. So, yeah, brings some big-time speed. And we got a nice player here in the backfield in Enrique Baldwin, fresh out of Eastern Michigan. Nice little Max Crosby find here. I imagine he was speaking into the scouts here. 86 superstar running back. 5'11", 224. Good speed, good power. Really an all-around type player. 
And even though we don't have much control on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, it's not brutal. We got some studs. Ward, superstar. Rice, superstar. 85, 86. Plummer at safety. 91, 80, 85, 82. I mean, you know, he could use like maybe a linebacker, another corner. But ultimately, like not a liability defense. That is definitely a playoff caliber defense and a playoff caliber offense. So hopefully we made the right call with Bryce Young moving to Vegas. All right, maybe a, at least a little bit of activity in free agency. We get uh, linebacker here, 31 mil, 25 mil for wide receiver Luke Shaw. Andre Sisco and Nate Hobbs coming back. So some veteran gets for the secondary. And Shaw, not bad, man. Like We needed a third wide receiver. We went out and got an 84, 26 years old out of Oklahoma State. Slot wide receiver, so has a defined role on the offense. We didn't get this kind of TLC while we're in New York. But at a draft recap, I mean, hey, I appreciate it. Going back to back on offense. Third round, we get Billy Winters, 75 hitting dev guard out of the Ohio State. Pretty well rounded. Limited size, though. Like, I like when we get bigger guards that we can always kind of realistically kick out to tackle if we want to. This guy's always looking to be an interior player. We go wide receiver in the first round. Rayshon McDaniels out of the U. 75 playmaker with a dev trait. So already, it's only been one offseason. I'm liking what I'm seeing more here in Vegas than what we were getting in New York. So advantage, general manager of the Vegas Raiders. Plus, I mean, let's be honest. You trade for Bryce Young, you didn't have to give up a first-round pick. You fleeced the Giants. So year one here in 2031 for Bryce Young and the Raiders. They go 12-5. and five. Passing offense, maybe not as elite as the rushing offense, but elite overall. Very, very nice. We win the AFC West, so add that to Bryce Young's resume. I mean, statistical class, pretty good. 3,900 yards, 35 touchdowns, only five interceptions for Bryce Young. Even I mean, even his rushing numbers are still fairly solid. I was a little worried because when we were in New York, he had that Daniel Jones influence on the playbook, which does have a lot of quarterback scrambles, but that is a nice rushing offense. Receiving Bradley Cheeks was a go-to with 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, 10 tutties for Brock Bowers. We cruise in the first round of the playoffs as the two-seed 38-13 over the Bills. Bryce Young... Now, a seasoned veteran, uh, you know, just played a professional game. Didn't put the ball in harm's way. Two total touchdowns, but that rushing attack is elite. We get ourselves a tuck rule rematch as the 12-5 Vegas Raiders take on Drake May and the 12-5 New England Patriots. And in a close one, we get revenge there. And it's going to set up a one versus 2 seed to truly find who the best team is in the AFC. That's an outstanding game by Bryce Strong. Both quarterbacks played well. But we'll take the advantage. I bet we ran all over them still. We had that kind of performance. Ah, not so much. Shout out Bradley Cheeks. So standing between us and our very first Super Bowl appearance with Bryce Young is the 12-5 Texans. 87 overall, so they are not as good as us. Pretty good offense, though. Defensively, kind of middle of the mall. You look at the rankings. You know, they do have a 98 overall quarterback at C.J. Stroud. It's going back to that rivalry from that same draft class. And I think this one's going to be personal for Bryce Young. Holy shit, we did. It's a rematch from the John Gruden Super Bowl. 24-21. We get 10 points in the fourth. Both quarterbacks lay it all on the line. Three touchdowns and an interception each. But the Raiders, I mean, they were a playoff team when we inherited them. What We were picking, what, 22, 23, something like that. So it was an early playoff exit last year for the Raiders. They went out, they got Bryce Young to be a needle mover. And is he ever... Moving the needle. Love that. Two and a half sacks from Jonathan Rice. Got interception back there by Plummer. And that is... This is a winnable. I mean, they're the five seed. They're the Cinderella story from the NFC side of the bracket. Let's humble them. Hmm, that makes sense. All right. I was just like curious. Where did Bryce Young finish the MVP? He was top 10. And Joe Burrow is the man slinging it down there for Tampa Bay. It's the last thing on our objective board. To win a Super Bowl. We've already made Bryce Young statistically better than any quarterback the Carolina Panthers have ever had. He wins this Super Bowl. We're going to be able to ride off into his side. That is bizarre seeing Joe Burrow, quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, following some weird Tom Brady career arc. This is the Bowers. Defense did a great job on the opening drive, holding them to a punt. Now it's our turn to go to work. Oh, you don't want to be Tessa Winfield. You just... I know Cheeks is our guy. Not a good decision. Cheeks, finally. This is how you get him involved. No 50-50s. Get it to him in space. Let him get his yak. Want to get some points here? We'll take the screen pass. 
And, uh, yeah, absolutely nothing. Kaliza Canty runs through that one. We'll settle for the field goal. Wow, safe, really? Okay, cool. Awesome, cool. Yep. Sick. Yes! Go from a safety because we're on our... And they get it again, and we're on our one again. Gong Show. Whoever the Bucks punter is, he is the MVP of this matchup. And this is what you need. Doesn't always need to be Bryce Young. Baldwin wins the foot race. First play of the second half. And the Vegas Raiders an extra point away from taking the lead. Can the defense capitalize on that? No, no, they can't. Ooh, a little bit of slants cheese, but we will take it. First big explosive play by Bryce Young today. Middle of the field. Too many. Spread them out. And that is... How do we... What are we missing the points for? Brock Powers. Oh, I don't know if he sees it. Getting up there in age a little bit. That is a huge running catch. Again, got to operate with the fact that Bryce Young started with 87 throw power. Currently has 87 throw power. Deep throws, 25 yards down the field. Unless they're wide open, not going to work. Got to be accurate. We could scheme our players open. And that is a big running catch. By Brock Bowers. We only need a field goal to regain the lead, but we want a touchdown. I do like the probability that we can get this to Brock Bowers. Let's go. Weapon. Absolute weapon. Come on, defense. Yes. They still got all their timeouts, but a couple first downs, and we'll be champions. With that, we are going to be able to go to the best play, the most overpowered play. In all of football, the kneel as Bryce Young. It is ninth season in the NFL. After being deemed a bust by the Carolina Panthers, goes to New York where he breaks all of the all-time Carolina passing records. Doesn't work out to actually, Honestly, we get screwed by the Giants. They draft the quarterback. It's disrespectful. So the agent shops him around. We go to a playoff team last year. In the Raiders, join them this offseason. And that is the needle mover right there. Bryce Young is a Super Bowl champion. And everything he's been able to accomplish would make him the greatest quarterback in Carolina Panther history. So the revenge tour has been completed. All three of our challenges that we set out, we have achieved them. I still think we should just play until Bryce Young retires. See how he finishes. See if he's going to be a Hall of Famer when all is said and done. But our main challenges are done. And he brings a Super Bowl championship to Las Vegas. Very football. I mean, it was not particularly. I mean, we just, no shot plays. Had to just take what the defense gave us. 200 yards, two touchdowns. Able to run the football. Enrique Baldwin probably has a Super Bowl MVP coming his way. Unless something crazy happened on the defensive side of the ball. Which it did not. So, I mean, maybe in a perfect world, Bryce Young dominates in a Super Bowl performance. But I think we'll take the ring. And it's no less of a check mark to our challenge board that he didn't have an S tier type game, but he was outstanding. I'd have loved to see us be aggressive in free agency, and we decide uh, let's just run it back with the same team. Oof. We're getting close to upsetting the quarterback room again. Second round pick, we go maybe not backup quarterback, last pick of the second round. Not disgusting. Not as offended as what the Giants did to us. In the first round, we got Troutman at corner. 76 where they hit to have 6-3 with 93 speed. It's an absolute dog right there at Florida State. I will say we are facing our first year of regression going into year nine as Bryce Young was an 87. Now he's an 86. I can't remember last time we had an upgradable point for him, but he won a Super Bowl. But I am a little worried versus if he was already like a superstar or an X Factor, we'd probably get a couple extra years out of him because he wouldn't regress as hard as I feel like he's going to because he would have had a higher ceiling. We do have an interesting decision, but I do think with the interest being that high, it's a layup. As defending Super Bowl champions, Bryce Young is going to lock in for two more years with the Vegas Raiders. And as the defending Super Bowl champions, we go 11-6 and six on the rebound. Uh, shocking passing numbers, though. 28th passing offense. We let the defense and rushing attack lead us to an AFC West title. Not too excited to see how Bryce Young played this year. Get, screw the yards. 36 touchdowns. I will take that every day of the week. Maybe, you know, a little less on the rushing touchdowns. He's getting older. He's being wise. He doesn't need to, 
the tuck and run as much. That's that's a solid year. That's a strong year. That's an ugly loss. It wasn't meant to be. 16-13. We fall to the Jets. And Bryce Young played like dog shit. Oh, the regression. Oh, no. My boy. Bryce Young now down to an 83. We just lost 20 on the regression. Awareness down one. Five thrown or pressure gone. Two accuracy. Three deep. Dang. We signed one guy in free agency. Like, what are we doing? We have money. Improve the team. And in the draft, we go heavy on D. I'm fine with that. 71 D tackle, 73 linebacker, 74 safety. Kind of late in the second round. Only a normal dev. What do we get? Do we at least get something? A big game changer on the D line in the first round. McCollum out of Mizzou. 6'4", 318, 76 with a hidden down. It's a great get. 2033, Bryce Young might be regressing, but the wins are not. 13 and 4. Man. Passing offense is not good. Luckily, we can just run the football a lot. But still not a liability. You know, we're just a team that wants to run the football. 30 touchdowns is acceptable for Bryce Young. 33 total on the year. But when you got a, a, a beast like Enrique Baldwin, you know, you don't have to throw the ball for 45 touchdowns. So he's he's managing the game. In his later years. There's nothing wrong with that. And we're back in the playoff win column. 38-17 over the rival Denver Broncos. And that is outstanding from Bryce. That, that's him letting you know. 354 touchdowns. We're going on the run. The defense is getting hot. Shut out the Pittsburgh Steelers. 27-0. I mean, you know, decent game. Didn't cost us. Defense played lights out, so you didn't really have to make a bunch of... It wasn't a shootout. We're going to have crazy numbers. I'm all right with that. With a chance to get back to the Super Bowl, the 9-8 and eight Jags stand before us, who are not really great at anything. But they have a solid roster. 90 overall against 90 overall here in the 2033 season. No! Oh, we're bid! Let's go! 31-28, an epic matchup. Trevor Lawrence still doing the damn thing. We did enough to win. We managed it. We ran the football better than they did defensively. We got one sack. On, we didn't really play great defense. But Bryce Young is in his second Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is set. 13-4, 90 overall Raiders against the 12-5, 87 overall Chicago Bears. This is two offenses that like to run the football and play good defense. And this is one of those ones. I, this might be our last one with Bryce Young. He is regressing at a point that I don't even think we're going to have to play Lou retires. He just won't be a starter anymore and chicago gets out early but we respond with a touchdown we need our elite defense to play elite hold them under 21 let the offense figure it out we go into halftime with a four point lead but it is an ugly low scoring matchup which i definitely think favors us 21 10 for vegas we have the experience have not seen caleb williams and the bears go on a lot of playoff runs and we oh, as as we don't blow this we're gonna get a second super bowl for Bryce Young and the Vegas Raiders. The confetti is silver and black again. 28-17 over the Chicago Bears. Caleb Williams continues to wait for that first Super Bowl. Bryce Young, you know, right now you entered in real life this season. Those are the hot young quarterbacks. Some of the big names. Caleb Williams, Bryce Young. They're already out on Bryce Young after two weeks. Able to turn his career around. Get his second Super Bowl. Also, I think at this point, probably solidifies himself as a Hall of Famer. I mean, the stat. Honestly, though, his stats are probably into like the Eli Manning. Like, is he in the Hall of Very Good or the Hall of Fame? Well, that's an outstanding. Give him Super Bowl MVP. Didn't get Super Bowl MVP the first time, but almost 80% completion percentage, 330 yards, three touchdowns. He's our MVP. Was just a little curious on the regression. We lost another three points. Luckily, the morale is very high. But, um, you know, I, I think we come back to the fact that I'm not upset when the Raiders drafted that quarterback in the second round. They kind of saw the writing on a wall. And I, I we might be, we're entering our last year under contract with the Raiders. That probably is going to be our, I don't know. We'll see where the regression takes us. But it could be our last season as a starter. Ergo, we'll make that the last year of the rebuild. We'll see. We'll ride this till the wheels fall off. For the offseason, no free agency signings. And we go, not a great draft. But anytime you still get pick 32, a 77 hidden dev playmaker. 
you know, I'd rather at least it be a top-heavy draft and get one stud, and that is what one night at Oregon appears to be. There's a chance this is the last ride. Let's go back-to-back oh, -back Super Bowl champs. And the end of year 11 of uh, this rebuild of the career Bryce Young. We do have a one-year contract offer, which we're going to talk about at the end of the season. We go 10-7. and seven, We win another AFC West. And we got a chance to defend our Super Bowl crown. Statistically, you know, we're, we hit a plateau but it's a solid one an acceptable one 3600 yards 31 touchdowns 13 picks and still when he needs to can make plays with his legs the career stats as they stand for bryce young two super bowls one super bowl mvp almost forty six thousand yards passing 364 touchdowns to 142 interceptions almost a career completion percentage of 70 and we also got 4,000 yards on the ground and another 43 touchdowns. 400 in his career. Yeah, I mean, that's MV. That's first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh. He losing the first round as the two seed to the Broncos. Bryce Young does not have the best game. And we're at that point where the backup quarterback that they drafted is a point higher in terms of overall than Bryce Young. And I think at this point, the career has been redeemed. 34 years old. He's done everything. Doesn't want to overstay his welcome. So that is how we, what are we going to come back for one more year? Just pat our stats a little bit. Everything has been accomplished. We have completed the career revival of Bryce Young. We don't need to see him trying to, you know, I, I don't want him to end. He ended with a respectable season, divisional championship made the playoffs i don't want to see him just play one more year and get like 23 touchdowns 17 picks as a feeble old man you gotta know when to get out and you get out on top so now that we're at the end of the road here is how bryce young's career stacks up on top of two super bowls and an mvp his 45,964 passing yards is enough to give him 17th all time ahead of joe flacco Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, pretty good. And his 364 passing touchdowns all time puts him at number 11, just two behind Eli Manning from cracking the top 10. As a runner, his 4,000 yards rushing puts him at seventh all time for a quarterback. His 43 rushing touchdowns has him tied for third all time with Steve Young. So all in all, I think a perfect start for a Madden 25 career rebuild series successful with Bryce Young. As I stated earlier, let me know in the comment section below other players that you would love to see a career revival on. We're kind of seeing one in real time play out potentially with Sam Darnold in Minnesota, but I got a big old list of names. Trey Lance is out there. John Ross is out there. I mean, obviously quarterbacks are probably a little bit funner, but there are plenty of options. So whoever you guys want to see next, let me know in the comment section below. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. We're very close to 175,000 subscribers on the channel. We'll love to hit that goal sooner than later. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the content. It's all I ask for in return because it helps out the channel with the YouTube robots and promotes it to people that might find my content interesting. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.